guys. So I weighed in a new weigh-in low of 161.8 this morning. Breakfast, pretty much the same, but instead of scrambling the eggs this morning, uh, Robin made them into omelets. So it's a little change, but the macros are the same. And then potato patties as usual. I got my coffee and my mixed berries. So the good news guys is that I did qualify for LASIK eye surgery. So I have an appointment to get that done at the end of the month. Uh, and it's not the best timing in the world because I have planned to do another meet on July the 12th. I'm going to be doing the New Brunswick Powerlifting Provincials. This is something that I mentioned to Eric, but it isn't something we're really going to peak for. It's basically just something for me to do along the way. Uh, in my prep and Robin and I get to travel to New Brunswick and do another meet for fun. So we're going to hit that. The problem is, is I'll have to take a few days up to a week off of training or only doing very light training. Probably a couple weeks out from that meet, which sort of sucks, but like I said, it's not a meet that I'm really putting everything into, so uh, I'd rather get the laser eye surgery yeah, done and over on. with. Good up, knees out. A meet at this point, just four or five weeks into my contest prep, is perfectly fine, and it'll be a good indicator for me as to whether I've lost any strength or gained any strength uh, with the new programming and with the weight that I'm losing. Uh, if I can maintain that strength, then that's great. And I don't think I'll be doing any more meets after this one into the show. I'll probably stick to more of a bodybuilding style of training and just go all the way through with that until the stage. So I finished off this workout here with a few sets of leg extensions and leg curls, and then I finished off the workout with a few calf raises. Here's a look at my post-workout and bedtime meal. We trained late tonight, so it's 11.23 and uh, there's actually almost 50 grams of protein in there, believe it or not. It's egg whites, whey protein, cocoa powder, gourmet cocoa powder actually, um, semi-sweet chocolate chips, and a crunched up granola bar. And yeah, I don't have a, a fat, so look at it. All right guys, so it's refeed day, and this is what I've got for my first meal. It's two pancakes done on our new griddle. Turkey bacon, hash brown, and a whole egg. And this is the best water flavoring that I've tried yet. It's the Mio lemonade. And this is what Robin has. Currently putting Nutella on her pancakes. Meal number two of refeed day. It's gonna be a Quest bar. Uh, yeah. All right guys, so this is gonna be my pre-workout meal. Uh, it's another slice of turkey bacon and what will eventually be a grilled cheese sandwich. And also, uh, I just had a protein shake, so just the uh, simple Costco Lean Fit protein. Uh, and you guys might or might not be aware of this, but uh, one thing that I always check for when I'm buying protein is under the ingredients, I'll look for glycine, creatine, and taurine. And if it has any of those in there, then I don't buy it because that means it's amino spiked. This is what it looks like prior to mashing. <laughs> and this is what it becomes. And just so you guys know, you don't need to have carbs in your post-workout meal to spike muscle protein synthesis. All you need is protein. Uh, if you're doing consecutive, glycogen depleting workouts in one day or within a 24 hour span, then it might be a good idea to have carbs just to replenish that glycogen. But otherwise it doesn't augment muscle protein synthesis and it doesn't seem to decrease rates of muscle protein breakdown. And whether or not we actually want to decrease rates of muscle protein breakdown is another question that remains to be fully seen. So I'm gonna eat this and then I'll talk to you guys after.
All right, so here's the mm, pseudo last meal of my refeed because I've still got to make my macros add up at the end of the night. Kind of burnt because I was editing another vlog and uh, I kind of burned it. Okay guys, so this is the official last meal. I ended up having about 100 grams of carbs left to hit. So I'm gonna have two glasses of this lemonade right here, which is the best. And that'll give me 48 grams of carbs. And then I'm gonna have a bag of this popcorn. That'll give me about another 50 or so grams of carbs. Okay guys, so back in the gym for another pull day. Since I'm still sort of running my own self-guided deload slash AMRAP testing, I decided to work up to another five rep max on the seal row. So I managed to get 205 pounds for five this week. And I'm just really growing to love this exercise because once you know how to set it up, it doesn't take that long. It took me about a, about a half hour the first week. It took me about five minutes the second week. And uh, it just basically prevents any cheating and stops any momentum so that you can really track your progress accurately from week to week. Uh, and then I moved on to the pull up again. And guys, if you would like to go check it out, I'm gonna put a link on the screen here to our new blog. Uh, so that's the strong.com blog where I'll be posting probably on a weekly basis uh, things not necessarily to do with my prep, but probably just nutritional science or exercise science in general. The last post that I wrote there was to do with uh, having too much flexibility with your diet. But you guys can feel free to go ahead and check that blog out. So after the pull-ups, I moved on to close grip seated cable row for three or four sets of 8 to 12 and then I moved on to reverse pec deck to really target the rear delts. And then this is my variation uh, of the cable curl. So these are Bayesian cable curls where you face away from the cable machine. And I just love this exercise. So it's post-workout and uh, we're gonna eat some sushi. First time I've had sushi in a while now actually since I started prep, so I'm looking forward to this quite a bit. Oh, thanks. So this is what I got. Tech Mackie. 